Good morning, boys and girls. I'm really glad that you came back to see me today. Have you been going outside and enjoying the nice weather out there? It's been so warm and sunny. And even if we can't be in the library spending time together, I guess we can at least go outside and enjoy the nice weather. It's May, it's spring. I hope that you are taking the time to go outside and have some sun. So today we've got some stories about some animals and some people who are outside running around in the sun, some of them having more fun than others, but I hope that you really like them. Should we get started? All right. <laughs> Clap your hands if you love stories. Clap your hands, I know you do. I'm so glad that we could be together. Glad to share a story time with you. Have you ever run in a race? Did you win? What are you supposed to do when you win? Do you jump up and down and say, I'm the best, I'm the best? Do you shake hands with the other person or people and say, good job? That's the right thing to do, isn't it? You don't want to be a sore winner any more than you want to be a sore loser, right? Otherwise, maybe they won't want to run a race with you again. Today we have a story called the tortoise and the hare. A tortoise is like a turtle, kind of. Are tortoises fast, do you think? Do you think they're really fast runners? And a hare, that's like a rabbit. Are rabbits really fast runners? Well, the rabbit in our story certainly was. This hare, we call him a hare, was the fastest animal in the forest. And I'm afraid that he was something of a bad winner when it came down to it. Now, he wasn't a bad rabbit. He wasn't a bad hare. He had a lot of friends. He had a lot of people that liked to do things with him. They liked to sit around the fire and eat carrots together. They liked to tell stories. He was really funny and he told the best knock-knock jokes in the entire forest. There was just that little matter of, he wasn't very polite when he won. And when it came to racing, he always won. So one day, he was up to his usual tricks. He was feeling feisty, the sun was shining, and he wanted to run and run and run. And he wanted to run faster than someone, because that's the only thing he thought was better than just plain running. And so he went to the bear and he said, hey, 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 want to run a race? Want to run a race? I bet I can run faster than you. The bear didn't want to run a race. He knew how that would end. And so the rabbit went over to the birds and he said, hey, who wants to see if they can fly faster than I can run? Come on, come on, I bet I can go fast. I bet I can win, I bet I'll beat you. Well, the birds didn't want to do it either. And then he went over to Mrs. Mole and he said, Mrs. Mole, I'll even give you a head start. You can dig underground as fast as you can and I'll still beat you to the finish line. Come on, it'll be fun. Well, she didn't want to go either. None of the animals wanted to hurt the rabbit's feelings particularly, but nobody really wanted to be the second one to the finish line and listen to the rabbit laugh at them again. And so while they were trying to figure out what to do, who should come along but Mr. Tortoise? He was a little late getting to breakfast that morning, as usual. And the tortoise said, why does everyone look so sad? And they said, it's Hare. He wants to run a race and nobody really wants to run against him. You know how he gets. The tortoise didn't really know exactly for himself how Rabbit got, how the hare got, because the hare had never even bothered to challenge the tortoise to a race. There wouldn't be much point in that, he felt. So the tortoise said, maybe I can help. And he went up to the hare, who was dancing around, warming up, and he said, Hare, I will race you. And Hare felt kind of uncomfortable. He said, are you sure? You know that I'm a really fast runner, right? And Tortoise said, I know, but I bet I can give you a run for your money. Hare got even more uncomfortable and he said, no, I don't think this is a good idea. I can get one of these other guys to run against me. It's okay, you don't have to run. 
And the tortoise said, are you afraid to run against me? Are you afraid that you'll lose? Well, the hare couldn't take that sitting down, could he? He said, fine, you want a race? You'll have a race. I'll show you how fast I can run, afraid of losing. Ha! And all the other animals didn't know exactly what was going on, but they knew that they were interested to see. So someone drew a line in the dirt for a starting line. And another animal went to the other side of the forest, and drew a line in the dirt for a finish line. And the rabbit said, all right, here we go. First one across the forest to the other side is the winner. The tortoise said, I'm ready. And so Mrs. Bear said, on your mark, get set, go. And the hare took off running as fast as he could. And he was gone from sight before anybody could even blink. And when the dust cleared, they saw the tortoise ambling his way down the path. And everyone sighed because they knew how this was going to end, but they made their way to the finish line just to wait, just to see. Well, the rabbit dashed and dashed around this tree and around that bush. And he'd been running for a little bit and he stopped and he looked back over his shoulder and he couldn't even see the tortoise behind him. He was long gone. And he thought to himself, this really is not fair. This is, this is ridiculous is what this is. I really shouldn't make it look so easy. And I've got time. I'm just gonna sit down here by this tree and wait for a bit. And when I can see him coming in the distance, I'll start running again and head for the finish line. I've got plenty of time. And so he sat down by the tree and he played with the grass by his feet and he yawned. And he said to himself, you know what? I've got so much time and this is gonna be such an easy race that I'm just gonna close my eyes and take a nap. I'll be awake before he's even halfway done and then I can finish the race. And so he closed his eyes and let the warm sun melt into his fur and then he was fast asleep. Some time passed and the tortoise was making his way through the woods, steady, steady onward and onward, one foot after the other, before too much time had passed. He saw the rabbit ahead of him, up under one of the trees, fast asleep. You see, enough time had passed, the rabbit had not woken up as he thought that he would, and now the tortoise had caught up. And the tortoise made his way, slowly but surely, past the rabbit, continuing along the path. The other animals who were waiting at the finish line were peering into the distance, thinking the rabbit is being very, very slow today. What is taking him so long to get here? He should have been done a long time ago. And then suddenly one of the little mole babies said, look, look, it's the tortoise. And everyone gasped and they looked and sure enough, here he came. They could see him in the distance getting closer. And they started cheering and clapping their hands. Come on, tortoise, come on, come on. And all of that noise floated into the forest and woke up the rabbit. And he was stunned. He said, how long have I been asleep? Look, the sun has moved across the sky. What happened? I have to get going. And he sprang to his feet and started running as fast as he could. And he saw the tortoise ahead of him getting closer and closer to the finish line. And he ran and ran and ran and ran and ran. And the tortoise kept moving slowly but surely, one foot in front of the other. And the rabbit was panting and choking and trying to push his legs as fast as they could possibly go. And he was just about to the end. When the tortoise put a foot over the finish line and won. The rabbit was right behind him and fell across the finish line, devastated. He was just so sad. He'd lost a race and he lost it to the tortoise. He was so embarrassed. And he said, go on, 
laugh at me. You won. It's your right. You get to jump up and down and brag and be happy at the fact that I lost. And the tortoise said, that's not what friends do. And the rabbit said, oh, you're a better winner than I am, I guess. But how did you do it? How did you beat me? And the tortoise said, slow and steady wins the race. Who knows what kind of animal this is? It's a monkey. You're right. Can you make a sound like a monkey? What does a monkey say? Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, 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 ee, ee, ee. <laughs> that's right. All right, let me see three fingers. I say three little monkeys hanging in a tree. Can you make them hang just like that? Eating a banana just like me. Take a bite of it. <laughs> one had a frown and one had a grin. And one had banana all over his chin. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. Three little monkeys hanging in a tree, eating a banana, just like me. One had a frown and one had a grin and one had banana all over his chin. <laughs> so this is the story of the Johnny Cake Man. A Johnny Cake is it's kind of like a pancake, only it's made out of cornmeal. So it's like cornbread and they make it in a pan in the oven. And this is a very old story. I hope you like it. So once upon a time, there was an old man and an old woman and a little boy, and they lived in a house that was just outside the forest. And one day the old woman decided to make a Johnny cake man, a man. It was a Johnny cake that was shaped like a man. And she made the batter and she put it in the oven and she said to the little boy, now you keep an eye on that while I go out in the garden and help your father. But the little boy was too busy playing with his toys to pay a whole lot of attention. And so he wasn't really looking when suddenly the oven door popped open and out popped the Johnny cake man. And he rolled as fast as he could toward the door. Well, the little boy noticed then and he said, hey, come back here. And he went off running after the Johnny Cake Man. But the Johnny Cake Man rolled and rolled as fast as he could. And the little boy couldn't quite get a handle on him. And as he rolled out the door and down along the path by the garden, the old woman looked up and said, what is happening? And the boy said, it's the Johnny Cake Man. He's running away. And the old woman and the old man threw down their garden tools and took off running after the little boy, after the Johnny Cake Man. But as fast as they ran and as hard as they ran, they could not keep up with him. He just rolled and rolled and rolled as fast as he could. And soon they had to stop and catch their breath. And onward he rolled down along the path, closer and closer to the forest. And there were two men who were working to dig a well. And one of them looked up and said, hey, what are you doing there? And the Johnny Cake Man said, I ran from the old man and from the old woman and from the little boy, and I'll run from you too. And the well digger said, oh, will you? Because he didn't feel like it was appropriate to be getting back talk from a Johnny cake. And so he and the other well digger threw down their tools and took off running, chasing the Johnny cake man. But as hard as they ran, that Johnny cake man just rolled faster and faster and faster and they couldn't catch him. And soon they were exhausted and had to stop and catch their breaths. And he just kept rolling and rolling. And then he was in the woods and he was still rolling along the path. And then he passed a mother bear and her cubs. And the mother bear looked up and said, what do I see along the path? And the Johnny cake man said, I ran from the old man and from the old woman and from the little boy and from the well diggers and I'll run from you too. And the mother bear said, we'll see about that. My cubs are hungry. And so she and her cubs started to chase the Johnny Cake Man down the path. And bears can run really fast. But apparently Johnny Cake Men can roll faster than a bear can run because he rolled and rolled and rolled. And before long, the bears were so tired that they had to stop and pant and catch their breaths. And he kept going and got away. And soon he rolled past a wily old wolf. And the wolf looked up and said, where are you rolling to so quickly? 
and the Johnny Cake man said. I ran from the old man, and from the old woman, and the little boy, and the well diggers, and Mama Bear and her cubs, and I'll run from you too. And the old wolf said, I don't believe that you will. And he took off running on all four legs. And the Johnny Cake man rolled and rolled and rolled, and the wolf chased him as fast as his legs could carry him. But it wasn't fast enough. And soon he, too, was exhausted and had to stop with his tongue lolling out of his mouth and catch his breath. And the Johnny Cake Man got away. And he kept going and going and going until he passed a tree that happened to be the home of a sly old fox who was sort of lazy and was just getting out of bed for the morning. And the fox said, where are you off to so quickly today? And the Johnny Cake Man said, I ran from the old man and the old woman and the little boy and the well diggers and Mama Bear and her cubs and the wily old wolf, and I'll run from you too. And the sly fox said, I am an old fox and I'm hard of hearing. I know that you're talking to me, but I can't understand you. Could you come a little bit closer and say that again? And so the Johnny Cake Man got a little closer and he said, I ran from the old man and from the old woman and the little boy and the well diggers and Mama Bear and her cubs and the wily old wolf and I'll run from you too. And the fox said, well, I can kind of hear you, but it's still muffled. I need you to come even closer. Try it just for me. I'm sorry. And so the Johnny Cake Man got closer and he said, I ran from the old man and from the old woman and from the little boy and from Mama Bear and her cubs and from the wily old wolf and I'll... But that was as far as he got because the sly old fox opened his mouth and... That was the end of the Johnny Cake Man. The sly old fox, you see, might not have liked to run, but his brain was plenty fast. <laughs> All right, who remembers the song A Little White Duck? Remember? From other story times? With a little white duck and a little green frog, a little black bug and a little red snake. We're gonna do that one. And remember, you have to help me make the sounds of the animals as we do them, okay? There's a little white duck sitting in the water, a little white duck doing what he ought to. He took a bite of the lily pad flapped his wings and he said, I'm glad I'm a little white duck sitting in the water. Quack, quack, quack. Good job. <laughs> There's a little green frog swimming in the water. A little green frog doing what he ought to. He jumped right off of the lily pad that the little duck bit. And he said, I'm glad I'm a little green frog swimming in the water. Ribbit. Ribbit, <laughs> ribbit. <laughs> There's a little black bug floating in the water. A little black bug doing what he ought to. He tickled the frog on the lily pad that the little duck bit. And he said, I'm glad I'm a little black bug floating in the water. Bzz, bzz, bzz. <laughs> and now there's a little red snake playing in the water. A little red snake doing what he ought to. He frightened the duck and the frog so bad. He ate the bug <laughs> and he said, I'm glad I'm a little red snake playing in the water. Hiss, hiss, hiss. And now there's nobody left sitting in the water. Nobody left doing what they ought to. There's nothing left but the lily pad. The duck and the frog ran away, and I'm sad, cause there's nobody left sitting in the water. Boo! Hoo! Hoo! <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed story time today, and I hope that you're gonna get outside and see how fast you can run, see whether you're as fast as a Johnny Cake Man, maybe as fast as a hare. Even if you're as slow as a tortoise, you can still go outside and have some fun, right? And I hope also that you know that the library, we're not open yet, but your mommy or daddy might be able to go onto the website and see if there are any books that they might want to get and we can make an appointment and you can pick them up so you can have a little bit of the library at home. 
all that information about how to do that is on the library website. So you might have some fun there. Are you ready? You ready to say goodbye? I'm not ready to say goodbye, but it's time, right? Will you help me, Mr. Monkey? All right. Let me see you reach for the ceiling. Oh, he can reach really far. And touch the floor. Stand up again. Let's do some more. Touch your head. And now your knees. Up to your shoulders. Like this, you see. Reach for the ceiling. And touch the floor. That's all there is. There isn't any more. Can you say bye-bye?